I am uh, Rob Reynolds from the National School of Government and I'm delighted to be talking today to David McLeod, uh, Senior Advisor on Change and Performance at Towers Perrin, Non-Executive Director of Ofsted, Visiting Professor of the Cass Business School, former head of the Dulux brand at ICI and publishing later this year a book on employee engagement. Firstly, David, uh, can you explain what you mean by engaging staff for performance? Yes, I, I mean, I think if you take it at this most practical level, you know, does, do you walk past a mistake that could be corrected? Uh, if you see an opportunity to save cost, do you bother to take that opportunity? If you see an opportunity to give better customer service or to go a bit further uh, in, in helping the organisation deliver its promise, do you take those opportunities? Uh, or to put very simply, do you go the extra mile in delivering what it is the organisation's trying to do? And if you do, you're probably engaged. Mm. And if you don't, and you walk past it, and you leave it to somebody else, someone else's job, someone will fix that later, then you're probably not engaged. So it's a very, it's a very day to day, mm. touches everything, and in a sense, quite practical thought. Okay. So if um, if if it's if it's a good thing to do, is there a business case? Is there a good foundation that organisations and, and in particular yeah. staff should do it? Yeah. Well, um, I mean, that's the big question, isn't it? Can, can one prove there's some sort of link between organisational performance mm -hmm. and engagement? And my view is that there's no one final single definitive study that you can say this proves completely there is a link. But if you put various bits of evidence together, uh, four or five that I think are quite compelling. It's very difficult to say when you put them together that there isn't a link. For instance, um, ISR have done some work where they've looked at uh, levels of engagement and then divided them to highly engaged and not engaged organisations mm. and looked 12 months later at, in this case, private sector, profit, sales growth and earning per share uh, performance. Right, yeah. And the highly engaged are sort of 9, 10, 19% up on these three items. Okay, yeah. And the disengaged are all down 12 months later. Okay. If you look at um, work that uh, we've done, uh, there's a correlation between 15% higher engagement scores with just over 2% higher operating margin. Now, these are slightly private sector, but these are easier issues to measure. If you look at... Um, whether people are likely to stay or go, mm. then they're far more likely to stay if you are engaged. Yeah. If lastly, if you look at uh, ask people whether they think they can impact sales or customer service or quality, then the highly engaged are about three times more likely to be positive on their ability to impact these things than others. And there's other there's lots of case studies uh, where people have um, have looked at this over time. And I think if you put it all together. Mm it's very hard to refute the notion that there's a link. Sure, okay. Um, I'm quite interested to explore um, whether these issues are generic in organisations, for example, b between the private and the public sector, or different management levels, or maybe different types of job at the front line or in headquarters, like we are here today in the DFES. Uh, have you noticed any differences, or are, are they generic? Yeah. I think there's, um, well, maybe two ways to come at that. There's, there's inevitably there's an organisational history that goes on here. If, you know, if, you, if you're starting to, to, to try and enhance levels of engagement and the organisation's just been through, over recent times, three failed change programmes, mm. you've got a very different start point to if the organisation is basically very successful <clears throat> and you want to build on that success. Yeah. Or if you're running um, I don't know, a high-hazard chemical company, clearly it's different to if you're running um, you know, a, a call centre helping people with, through HMRC. So um, there are different start points, but there's some themes um, that run through it all. Okay. I, think, I think the other thing is, you, you asked about the public and the private sector and other differences. Mm. Levels of engagement are actually overall very similar, not very high between the private, for the public or the private sector. Right. If, however, you then get underneath that and look at what are the differences, mm. I wouldn't overrate them, but there are, there are some that I think are quite interesting. The, the public sector employees um, talk more freely about the, the desire for um, more freedom to deliver, the need for collaboration, the 
public sector talks more about that, I think, because it's not so readily there. There's some evidence that the uh, second line management in the public sector is um, a tad less engaged mm. than in the, uh, in the private sector. We might come back, that's so important. Mm. I think also, of those three issues I touched on a minute ago, um, quality, uh, customer service and costs, it's very interesting the public sector and the private sector employ exactly the same scores for their belief they can impact quality and their belief they can impact customer service. But costs, about half, uh, half as much impact really? for the public sector as the private mm. sector, which, is, um, which I think is interesting. That is interesting. Yeah. Actually, that leads me to, to my next point, which is um, to sort of describe the context which public servants are operating in. You know, um, efficiency savings, um, budgetary constraints, um, a plethora of change initiatives which yeah. you've, um, you mentioned, and actually uh, also a close scrutiny from the media. I mean, how does that context affect um, staff engagement? Yes. Um, well, it's very interesting. The, uh, we looked at all the academic research that tries to link some, some dimension of engagement to uh, performance. And uh, one of the most compelling, which was actually uh, in America, um, showed almost a slightly better link between winning leading to engagement mm. as engagement leading to winning. Well, let's just say there's a very good link between a feel that I am winning and, and the fact that I am engaged. So when you think about that in relation to the point you just raised, mm. you know, if, if there's an environment in which you are constantly reminded of things that haven't gone well, failures, mm. um, and that's a very partial picture, then I think it's terribly important to reinforce where the successes are. Yeah. That the fact that um, we've succeeded in particular places or that we've succeeded in, in certain areas, that things we are doing well. If you want people to be engaged, it's terribly important, as long as you can authentically do this, is to also find those areas where we're succeeding so people feel they're part of a, a winning organisation, not without its hot issues, not without its problems, not without its things that have gone wrong, but in general, we're part of something that's making a contribution. Sure. So I think this winning dimension is something mm. that I think is, uh, is, is very important as a context. The other thing that I think is um, uh, broadly in the same space is the, um, is the importance of, uh, of co-ownership. You know, how do we manage ourselves so people have a chance to kick the ball, have a mm. chance to input? They feel they've been listened to. And if people feel they've had that opportunity, not necessarily that their points prevailed, but, mm. they've, but they've had this opportunity. They're far more likely to be, um, to be committed, to be engaged, um, to, uh, to, make things, to make things happen. There's a very simple, but I think quite compelling little example. I was speaking to someone who ran um, a, uh, a very large call centre, and the pattern of calls changed. And the first time the pattern of calls changed, they ordered everyone into a new roster system, and morale went through the floor. The next time, a very simple process, they drew everyone together and said the pattern of calls changed. Now who can manage more working early in the mornings or late at night or weekends, whatever it was? And people started to volunteer and say I could do... They redesigned their roster uh, and morale went up. Sure. So this kind of, it takes a bit more time, mm -hmm. but the level of engagement and commitment is therefore um, uh, that much stronger. So I think both these points uh, spring to mind on, on okay. that.